Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As we begin, why don't we pray together? Let's pray. Um, Lord, help. Amen. Amen. Right, let's crack on. Um, I wonder if you've ever paid uh, good money to be shouted at for 45 minutes. Um, I have. I recently took my first spin class. Now, I, for those the only, the only initiated among you, a spin class is where you come together, lots of very enthusiastic people, and there's a very, very enthusiastic instructor, and you sit on stationary bikes, and you go through the exercises um, that the instructor tells you to do. And I decided to do this. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get stuck in. So I signed up for a class, and um, I'll be honest, I was a bit nervous. I walked up to the front desk, and you have to check in because you've made this booking online, and then they greet you at the front desk. And the first thing I asked, the first thing I was asked was, what, my, what was my shoe size? And this immediately threw me, because I thought, what is this, like a bowling alley? I thought I was going cycling, but no, it turned out I needed cycling shoes, so I got those. And then the, this class that I went to, um, it was a bit like going to a club, um, on a Tuesday evening at 5.30. Totally dark room, walls all painted black. The only lights are in there, these sort of strobe club lights. And the music in there is like incredibly, incredibly loud. <laughs> okay? It was so loud, I actually left the class to go back upstairs to ask if I could have some earplugs. Um, you've got to, guys, you've got to protect your hearing, particularly when you're cycling. And uh, I get in there, and you get on a bike, and you get clipped in, and I had to ask someone to set up the bike for me because I didn't know what I was doing. And then, and then the instructor starts talking to you. Okay, Tuesday. Okay, let's get into it. And they've got this headset mic, a bit like the one that Jago wears when he preaches. You'd make a great spin instructor, Jago, I'm sure. Okay, Tuesday, let's get into it. And you start doing these things, and you're like trying to cycle in time to the music, and then they get you sort of bobbing back and bobbing forward and doing all of this. And then, something happened. We start, the, the instructor started speaking to us. He said, okay, let's leave behind us that boss who's been mean to you at work. Let's believe, leave behind that colleague who said that thing. Let's leave behind our to-do list. Let's believe, leave behind our worries. Let's get rid of them today. And I thought to myself, I've come here to get rid of the cheesecake that I had last night. Not the sort of trauma I've had in the workplace. But something very interesting was going on. There we were in this spin class, and I thought we were there to exercise. And the instructor is speaking, and actually, I realized what we're getting was a sort of motivational, holistic, well-being speech. And if you like, it was a little bit like a sermon. It was a little bit like we were being preached to in the spin class as you're sweating as the music's very loud, you know, you're trying to, I'm trying to get in time. The whole class is like doing the moves perfectly. And I'm totally failing to do that. And then I'm trying to listen to what the person's saying. Because we even had a, a sort of illustration at one point. Because the main message of the spin class, which I wasn't ready for a message in a spin class, but the main message was essentially, if you can do this hard thing, you can do anything. And they, they use the words, you are an overcomer. Wow, and that's good for a Tuesday. That's a good message to hear, isn't it? But we even got an illustration about um, the instructor's train journey there, and they used their train journey as an example of something hard that they had overcome. And if I can overcome that, I can overcome anything. Now, I don't say any of this to disparage that very enthusiastic uh, spin instructor. They were a great communicator, a great motivator. I just say this to say that all of us have a philosophy for life, don't we? We have, you know, a vision of what the good life is. How do you live a good life? How do you be the best version of yourself? And actually, we get those messages given to us in all sorts of ways. We get it on our TVs, we get it on our social media feeds, and we even get it in spin classes. Who knew? But what I want to talk about today is what does God say life is about. When God is speaking to us, what does he say that the good life is all about? How do we become the best person we can be according to God? 
And I just want to share from a few verses where Jesus speaks. And I suppose what I want to talk about is, what is God like? Because as soon as you start asking, you know, what does God say, you know, how we should live and who we should be, actually you realize you're starting to talk about who God is like. So if you like, we're going to do a spin class with Jesus. I know that's cheesy, but go with me, okay? So if Jesus was your spin class instructor, what would he say to you, okay? So I'm going to give us a few headings, and we're going to go through these verses together. And the first thing I want to say is this. Um, In verse 28, Jesus said, come to me, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, said Jesus, I'll give you rest. Now, notice this. Uh, He is claiming to be God. This might be the kind of thing that you want to discuss at Alpha on a Tuesday. Jesus claimed to be God. And he doesn't say, hey, here are the, you know, four principles to achieve enlightenment, as Buddha said. He doesn't have here the five pillars of peace and submission, as Islam suggests. Jesus, uniquely as anyone else in human history has done, points to himself and says, come to me, come to me, and you will find rest. And he says, I am the universal solution to everything that burdens you. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. So let's do a spin class with Jesus Christ, shall we? Okay, great. This is the first thing I want us to see from what Jesus said. Firstly, Jesus welcomes the weary. Firstly, Jesus welcomes the weary. Let's look at verse 28 again. Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Jesus welcomes the weary. He doesn't say to come to me and come to know God, you have to be all happy and hopeful. He doesn't say you have to be all shiny and perfect and have it all together. He welcomes the weary and he welcomes the burdened. God specifically says to all of us, you can come to me if you are tired and you're weighed down by life. Notice how universal it is. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened. His invitation to come know him is for everyone. And then notice how generous his offer is. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. So no payment is required for the transaction that God has for us. We're not having to come and pay him for it. It is a gift. Jesus says, I will give you rest as you come to me. When we look around a room like this, we might be tempted to think that everyone seems pretty happy. They probably have, seem to have it all together. And as we speak to one another in church, we might be like, oh, you seem to be very, very happy. Your life seems to be going very, very well. But if you were here today and you were feeling tired and you were feeling weary, you would not be alone. There's so much in our lives that can burden us, whether that's things in our relationships, whether that's things in our jobs, whether that's health concerns, money concerns, whatever it is. We can be weighed down. We can even be weighed down, as I think so many are, with concerns for what's happening in the world, which is such a big thing to think about. You think about a conflict happening in Ukraine and the implications of that, and it can be like a burden. Just to share what I've been thinking about recently, I've been thinking a lot about my future and what my role is going to be in the future and uh, what's going to happen in my job. And that has been like a, a burden to me. And I've even described it as something that has been weighing me down as I've thought about essentially the uncertainty at the moment of my future. So if you're here today and you're feeling, yeah, actually I'm pretty tired, and actually I am burdened, or I certainly have been, well, you're not alone. Jesus welcomes the weary, and he says to you, you can come to me if you're like that. Jesus welcomes the weary, because that is exactly what he is like. Now very recently, I had a chance to attend a drinks party at number 10 Downing Street. And you might think to yourself, Tim, you could probably pick a sort of less controversial topic to discuss in a sermon. But I want to assure you, it wasn't one of those drinks parties that everyone's been very concerned about. It was a drinks party to celebrate Easter. And we've got a photo that's going to come up. Um, uh, You know, why go to number 10 if you're not going to take a photo and show people it? So this proudly went on my social media. But I'm a bit conflicted about showing you this because uh, I don't want you to think that I'm the kind of person who regularly gets invited to number 10 or that I sort of think of myself as important enough to put this out to you, you know. Um, I don't want you to think I'm showing off. 
Because then I was, I walked through security. You have to go through security and you take all, it's a bit like going through an airport and you take all the things in your pockets and you go through. And I was kind of laughing to myself because I was like, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? This is hilarious. This is literally Boris Johnson's house and you're walking up and there's a very nice policeman who shows you in and then they take off your, and you, you know, I'm walking up the stairs and you're looking at all the paintings of all the prime ministers and all their photos. And I was like, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. That's kind of, if I'm honest, how I felt. Which is why, as you can see from the photo, I decided to wear a suit and I decided to wear a dog collar because I kind of thought, well, maybe that would help people take me seriously. That's really what I thought. Actually, this kind of maybe legitimizes me and why I'm here. And I say that just to say, I wonder if we can feel like we need to do the same thing with God. We need to get ourselves all dressed up and we need to come to him to be perfect and we need to deal with everything we've got, and we need to be looking nice and smart, and we've got to have it all together. But what Jesus says, well, come to me, come to know me, all of you who are weary and who are burdened, who do not have it all together. And Jesus doesn't say you have to unburden yourself to come to me. In fact, it is your burdens that are the very thing that qualify you to come to know me. He doesn't look for perfection, but he welcomes us in our weakness and promises us the free gift of rest. Jesus welcomes the weary. But also from this, we see that Jesus guides us gently. Jesus guides us gently. This is just after Jesus invited us to come to know him. He says this, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As well as welcoming the weary, Jesus guides us gently. And I say guides us because Jesus uses a farming metaphor uh, from the culture of his day. He says, I want to guide you as you take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now we have to clarify, Jesus isn't talking about eggs, take my yoke upon you. This has nothing to do with chickens, but it is a farming metaphor. He is talking about a piece of wood that would go on the back of uh, cows or oxen's shoulder. A yoke was the thing that you fitted over oxen so that they could pull a plow together. And it would have been used then, it's still used in various parts around the world. And you can see it's that piece of wood that sits over there. And what people would do is so that the oxen could work together as a team is that they'd put them together. And also what they'd often do is put a older and inexperienced animal with a younger and inexperienced one. And in the same way, Jesus is saying, come and learn from me as an experienced older one, if you like. Come and learn how to do your life and come and work with me. Take my yoke upon you, uh, says Jesus. And when he says yoke, he's using it to suggest an image that they'd have all known. But also what he means is, come and live your life in accordance with the way that I want you to live it. Come and submit yourself to me. Come and obey me. And specifically, come and obey me when I tell you to believe in me and follow me. Jesus was once asked, what works do we need to do to follow God? And Jesus said, the work you need to do is believe in me. Now, hearing Jesus say, take my yoke upon you, even though he's saying uh, what I have for you, you know, I'm going to give you rest. We might think the idea of being a Christian or following this Jesus person, if that's what you wanted to do with your life, we might think that that sounds very restrictive Ah, that's very burdensome, because here's all these things you've got to do. Um, I wonder if you've ever um, approached something that sounded very peaceful, but actually turned out to be very, very hard. Recently, and this makes me sound incredibly middle class, but go with me, okay? Recently, I had a chance to go punting, and it was an absolute nightmare. Punting, you think that sounds lovely. We're in Cambridge. It wasn't a nice day, but that, that's not, we didn't think that was a problem, right? We're going to go punting. That's going to be lovely. We're going to go up the river. We're going to see all the beautiful, you know, bridges, and there's all these old buildings. And let me tell you, it was an absolute nightmare because I could not control this thing. You put your punt in the river, and you just head to one side of the river, and you do it again, and then you'd head to the other side, and then you'd do it again, and then you'd head to the other side, and then you'd try and turn around. And I got so weary with this, I actually got out towards the end, and I just pulled the boat along the edge, sadly. <laughs> It was so bad at one point when we were trying to turn around at the other end that people started laughing and taking photos. I kid you not. This thing that was meant to be lovely turned out to be awful. Maybe you feel like it's a bit like that with Christianity. 
Here's Jesus saying, I'm going to give you rest. Rest. What I have for you is light and it's easy. But you think about Christianity and following Jesus and you think, no, that sounds restrictive. That sounds burdensome, even if Jesus is presenting something else. But notice what Jesus says. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus describes a burden that he places on us, but it's actually a non-burden. What he puts on us, his way of life is restful. It's full of rest. Jesus doesn't mean that if you become a Christian, suddenly everything in your life is perfect, but that as you follow him, you can have a peace with you in every circumstance you might face. My yoke is easy and my burden is light, said Jesus. And we might think that taking the yoke of Jesus, following him is burdensome, but notice what Jesus says. And look at how Jesus describes himself. This is God describing himself. Jesus says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. This is why I say that Jesus guides us gently. Because he says, you can trust that I have an easy yoke for you because I am gentle and I'm humble in heart. To say that Jesus is gentle means that he does not treat weary and burdened people harshly. He gently and kindly meets us exactly where we are at. Jesus is, if you like, he's the true gentle giant. Yes, he's God, but he gently deals with us. Jesus says, I'm humble in heart. And that's actually the only time in the Gospels where Jesus describes his own heart. And Jesus says, I'm humble in heart. And that means that he is available to us. And even though he is God, he associates himself with humble sinners like you and I. Um, I love how Dane Ortberg, who's written a book about all this, this verse, puts it. What does it mean to say Jesus is gentle and humble in heart? He says this. The point in saying that Jesus is humble is that he is accessible. For all his resplendent glory and dazzling holiness, his supreme uniqueness and otherness, I love this, no one in human history has ever been more approachable than Jesus Christ. No prerequisites, no hoops to jump through. I love how he sums that up. No one has ever been more approachable than Jesus Christ. Jesus says, come to me because I am gentle and I am humble in heart. And you can trust that what I have for you will give you rest because in the very center of who I am, I am gentle and I am humble. And I want you to learn from me. Jesus welcomes the weary and he guides us gently. But also, there's another thing I want us to see here, is that Jesus bears our burdens. Jesus bears our burdens. Again, we might think that following Jesus sounds burdensome, but we have to understand what he is offering us. Jesus says again, let's read it again. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, we have to see that he is offering us, if you like, a transfer. He says, give your burdens to me and let me bear them. And I'm gonna give you a way of life that won't weigh you down and that actually will be a way of rest. Come and give me all that burdens you so that I can give you the freedom that I have for you. Come and find rest, says Jesus, for your soul. Jesus bears our burdens. And when Jesus spoke about burdens, he did have a specific kind of weariness and burden in mind. And he is talking about the weariness that comes from having to prove yourself, having to justify yourself. And especially in the context that he was speaking about, having to justify yourself before God. In another part of Matthew's gospel, in Matthew 23, Jesus criticized the religious leaders of the day for weighing people down with heavy loads. He says he criticized them for putting on heavy, cumbersome loads on other people's shoulders. And he's criticizing them, saying, you're, put, you're weighing people down with religious rules that they have to follow, and you're placing a burden on them that is too great to bear because they can never live up to these rules that you are giving them that you say they have to follow if they need to be right with God. Now, even if you're not religious, if you live with a constant sense of having to prove yourself, you will be weary and you will be burnt out. Even if you're not trying to prove yourself to God, but you're trying to prove yourself to yourself and other people, you'll be weary and burdened. 
So there was Jesus speaking to the people of his time, people weighed down by religious rules, saying, come to me and take my yoke upon you, and you'll find rest, because what I have will not weigh you down, but it is easy and it is light. Take my easy yoke and take my light burden. Now, you might be listening to this today and say, yes, Tim, this is all well and good, but I'm not trying to live up to any religious standards. And in fact, my life is pretty good. Things seem to be going pretty well. I don't feel weighed down at the moment. I'm certainly not by anything that, as I try to follow God. You might, you might want to say, well, this doesn't really apply to me. But as I say, I think it's very possible, even if you're not a Christian, to put things upon ourselves that will weary and burden us. And we can all carry that burden of trying to prove ourselves. Do you remember the spin class I attended? <laughs> okay, Tuesday. Remember that one? I was so fascinated by that whole experience that I actually decided to reach out to the uh, spin class instructor. Because um, in the course of the lesson, as well as among many other things they said, they said, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> you know, music's still going on. Okay, I'll follow you on Instagram. So I decided to message them. And what I asked was, I'm, you know, I'm really interested in this philosophy that you're trying to get across in your class, this positive message. Would you mind telling me what it is? And we're going to have on the screen, this is a little uh, picture of the messages, the DMs that we were sending back and forth. So I asked this spin class instructor, as you can see, the second one down, I guess what I'm asking is, what is the philosophy you are trying to get across? And they said this, it's about believing in ourselves. Knowing we can do hard things, we're built to be tested and it's okay to fail, but it's how we bounce back and recover that builds resiliency. It's about believing in ourselves, they said. Now, on one hand, that sounds like a good goal, doesn't it? You know, encouraging resilience in people, encouraging some self-belief. Good, that seems laudable and reasonable. But I thought this was so interesting because I think it shows us that even if you're not a Christian in saying you're following and believing in God, it's very possible to replace that with believing in something else. And maybe you're here today and you are following that philosophy of actually, well, I just need to believe in me. I need to believe in me. And if I can do hard things, then I can bounce back. Then I'm going to be okay. The thing is, we're all yoked, to use Jesus' image. We've all taken things upon ourselves. We've all taken a way of life upon ourselves. And if you're not sure what that is, if you're not sure what your yoke is, if you like, just think about the thing that you value the most. Think about the thing that you cherish the most. And here's the thing. Unless the thing that you cherish the most is Jesus Christ, you will be weary and you will be burdened. There might be some of you today, you're a Christian, and you've been thinking, actually, I am so burdened by life. And you just need to come to Jesus again and say, Lord, I want to take what you have upon me and put you first. Because I've been weighing myself down with trying to prove myself. It's about believing in yourself, said the spin class instructor. And maybe a bit of self-belief is good. But what Jesus showed us that we need something much more than just belief in ourselves. Jesus said this, verse 28 again. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. And he promises you this, and I will give you rest for your soul. Come to me, and you will find rest, and you will find rest for your soul. And what Jesus was talking about was a deep, eternal peace with God, your author, your creator, your maker. He says, the one that you were created to know, you will find peace with him you see, Jesus came to deal with all the root and all the burden and all the causes of all the things that weigh us down. Jesus doesn't just offer something superficial. He offers us the kind of rest we really need. Do you know that when there's different kinds of sleep? Did you know that? There's different kinds of sleep. And when you go to sleep, actually, it's not about the ju just the duration of your sleep, but the kind of sleep that you have. And the kind of sleep that we really need is that deep REM sleep. Have you heard of that? Rapid eye movement sleep. That's the kind of really deep and restful sleep. And if you like, what Jesus offers us isn't something that's shallow and is going to tire us out again, but that deep REM peace, if you like, because he says you're going to find a peace for your soul. Because Jesus came to die upon the cross for us. And he came to bear the burden of our sin. You see, all of us, even if we tend to think we're pretty good people, are not perfect. And all of us, and very much including me, have sinned against other people and we have been sinned against. 
And yes, the word sin is a religious word, but we have sinned against God in such a way that means we've cut ourselves off from him. We've all gone our own way. We've all done our own thing. And therefore, we live in a world where it is so possible to be burdened, where it is so possible to be weary because of what we do and what others do to us. But Jesus came to renew us and he came to renew the world. And what he promised is, I'm gonna take your sin upon the cross. I'm gonna bear that burden on me there so that you can bear my easy and light burden. And what I want to encourage you today is come to God and say, Lord, take all my sin all the things I've done wrong and take all the things that are weighing me down because Jesus said, come to me, cast your burdens on me, I care for you. I encourage you today to come to Jesus and say, take all that's burdening me and I wanna take your yoke, I wanna take your way of life upon me, I wanna follow you because as you do that, God promises you rest. He promises you deep, eternal rest and peace in this life and in the next. He promises you rest that can never be taken away that nothing can shake, that whatever you face, you'll have peace and hope. Jesus welcomes the weary. And today, if you recognize the burden of trying to prove yourself, you're qualified to come to God. Jesus guides us gently and says, come to me and you'll find a proper rest. You'll find a rest for your soul because I'm gentle and I'm humble in heart. And Jesus bears our burdens because he takes our sin upon himself. He offers us forgiveness as we trust in him. As we give up trying to prove ourselves, as we give up trying to live a perfect life, but we say, Jesus, I trust that you lived a perfect life for me, and I believe and I trust in you. God says to you today, come to me, and I'll give you rest. Let's pray together, shall we? Thank you, God, for what you're like, and thank you for who you've shown yourself to be. Thank you that you are the perfect instructor and you show us how to live our lives. And maybe you're here today and you wanna uh, respond to this Jesus and you wanna say, yeah, I wanna take your yoke upon me, God. So I just wanna say this prayer and I want to encourage you to um, say it to God in the quietness of your heart if you wanna say this to God. And maybe you wanna say this to God for the first time today. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. God, I want the rest that you have for me. I'm sorry for my sin and where I've gone my own way. And I ask you to forgive me and to bear my burdens, Lord. And I ask that you would come into my life. I ask that you would fill me with the Holy Spirit and that you would help me to live the kind of life I've always wanted to lead. In Jesus' name, amen.